Welcome to the Mike on Much podcast. I am here with my friend and trusted producer, Max Kerman, and also our pop culture aficionado, Shane Cunningham. Today on the show, listeners, we are talking to Dean Brody. The Broadster. That's right. Country <laughs> singer. You know what? He's a big time award winner. I think he might have won more Junos than you, my friend. Don't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Were you aware of that? No. Do you count other? Uh, Definitely not. No. Uh, also won a bunch of Canadian country music awards. Uh, we sat down. He's actually hitting the road October 20th to December 2nd for his Dirt Road Stories 2018 Canadian Acoustic Tour. Mm -hmm. So you can check out Mr. Dean Brody. We will get to him in a little bit because there's a lot's going on. There's a lot's going on. (laughs) There's a lot's going on, fellas. Uh, Yeah, I mean, there's so much going on right now, guys. We've, uh, you know, we've pinned it a while ago. I think we could talk about it, obviously. Uh, For those of you who don't know, uh, we're going to be doing a live uh, podcast at Just for Laughs, the Mm -hmm. festival, uh, September 29th at 1245 in the afternoon. The cool thing about the Just for Laughs festival, and we've talked about this a lot, like Montreal, they do a version of that here in Toronto, and there's all sorts of stuff. There's stand-up shows at night, and then during the day, you get these in conversations with, or what we're doing, like a live podcast. Podcast. Uh, our guest is TBD or mm-hmm. TBA because there's a few things floating around. We'll leave that tease out there and we'll let you know the minute that we know who our featured guest is going to be. But we're super excited about that. So check out uh, tickets online or if you have a pass, say you're someone that has a pass to the whole weekend, come check us out. Yeah. We'll talk more about it leading up to it. Mm-hmm. Aside from all that, I feel like I did a lot of promo off the top there. That's cool. You got to. Yeah. yeah. What's been going on in your lives, guys? Well, I got to say, uh, I walked in here this afternoon. And I said hi to Mike, and I honestly thought Mike was going to fire me as the producer. Why? Because you looked a little serious, and you looked a little stressed. And oh, I, I was scared. I thought something was going down for sure. And, and I thought, and I did something bad today that was a fireable offense. <laughs> uh, so I thought, I was like, this is finally the day where I get fired. And, and I wouldn't have any grounds to complain, because uh, I, I don't want to spoil who the interview was with, but it was a big interview that we had today. Yeah. Oh, and, people that follow me on Instagram would see it. Can you oh, yeah. tell me? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Shane, can you oh. tell me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so Mike interviewed Nile Rogers, and I was so gung-ho about this interview. He's a legend. He's a legend. I also personally wanted just a picture with Nile because <laughs> the music community would be impressed. <laughs> And then I was like, and I thought, I was like, okay, it's, uh, it's at 11 o'clock, and uh, I have a phoner that I had to do for our Kel stuff before, but I'll, I'll get there right at 10.45 and be ready to go, and then I got to the lobby at 10.45, and I'm like, Mike, I'm ready, and then you didn't respond, and then Shane's like, I think the interview was at 10. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I said, for what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for what? <laughs> for what? And then you just took a screenshot, and then you circled literally three messages up in our text group <laughs> yeah this morning <laughs> Where it said like yeah this morning so i texted you guys at like 9 15 i'm like see you soon it's like interview for 10 i was like you got it buddy <laughs> and i just totally didn't get the time right so mm-hmm. uh, but i feel bad man it would have been great no don't feel bad you can fire me were you gonna no, sit cool. in on the interview i was i was kind of excited just to watch it Okay. Yeah, I wasn't gonna be in the interview, but mm. I, just, I, you know, I just wanted to see it because, you know, I mean, Mike did most of the prep for this interview and prepared like all the questions. So again, well, that's I, a whole I, other thing. I didn't do my job in that respect, and then I said I was gonna be there for, at least for moral support, and I didn't do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm sorry, Mike. Oh no, there was another. Th- I, that's even. That's. I'm not even worried about that. Was I was. It, there's I was, a more fireable. Oh, offense? I was annoyed at you yesterday, man. Why? Well. I, I don't know if we should talk about this on the pod. No, no, no. Can you tell me? <laughs> 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 well, okay. So, uh, you know, we got this podcast. Yeah. We're always interested in potential sponsors. Oh, yeah. So there was a potential sponsor. For whatever reason, it wasn't going to work out, and that's okay. But when I went to our team here, who tries to get us sponsors, who are so great, mm-hmm. like later in the day, because we were trying to think of this innovative idea in order to secure it. So then finally I call and I go, hey, hang tight, still waiting to hear back. And then I hear, oh. Haven't you talked to Max yet? Oh. And I go, I go, no. I go, she's like, no, you need to talk to him. He told me to tell you to talk to him. Or I was told that, to wait to talk to them. But it's four in the afternoon. I go, oh, did you just talk to them? And, and, and she goes, no, it's like it was earlier in today. I'm like, oh, because Shane and I have just been sitting around here, you know, brainstorming, brainstorming ideas, gems. prepping shit. And mm. nobody, it all it takes is a text and just say the thing's not happening. No, but here's the thing is that I didn't know for sure it wasn't happening. There was a good chance it wasn't happening. And maybe that's what mm. I should have said. But there was, so this is, I hope we, we're going to have to cut all this out. All right. Why? I guess we could, I mean, I just, people, people listening. People need to know this. No, people listening. They need like, to know, What Max. the fuck are they talking about? Yeah, are we being too vague? Yeah, we're like, there's a thing, and then maybe there's well, a thing. We and have I a had sponsorship to say opportunity. <laughs> yeah, uh, there, there's one domain that w- would have been a conflict for our listeners that I couldn't do. But I was trying to work through it. Yeah. And, and that's why I didn't want to deliver a hard, guys, I'm really sorry, we can't mm-hmm. do it, until I had 
m multiple conversations about mm -hmm. uh, hello about uh, <laughs> who's that? It's Chloe Wilde. Oh hi, hi Chloe. Okay, calm uh, down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm really sorry. I, w I was going to talk to you. For about our listeners, Chloe Wilde just walked by the uh, where we're recording this in a studio. Yeah. Will I have to cut that? Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, leave it in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mac, middle mid conversation, Max like, "Hello," but she's on the other side of the glass. I can't hear what you said. You did twiddle your fingers. They were. Though. I got a better angle though. They were giggling about whatever you did all the way down there. Oh, oh. It was a good move. Okay. So anyway. I'm sorry. And she mouthed, he's hot, too. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> you're a liar. Um, but I like the way he said it. He's like, you're a liar, but he's hoping it's true. <laughs> Beat red. I'm all blushing. You now. are. You're flustered right now. Uh, oh, my goodness. So Bottom line, you took money out of my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's not the issue at all. It's for the, you, it's, it's not. The, it's the kill it so we're not brainstorming. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a fair. Uh, that's the only thing. That's a fair complaint, and I did make more work. It's a good question, though, in terms of process, because I didn't want to kill it on the off chance that we uh, we could have worked through it. But you know once I mean? you tell the uh, sponsorship brand partnership people, they're not going to pursue it yeah, anymore. Yeah, they're done. So there's no chance. Oh no, I didn't think we totally told them. To ah, that's what she. Uh, thought. Okay. Sorry. Don't apologize. No, I mean just yeah. be communicative. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we get lots of sponsorship opportunities. Yeah. Do not worry. Hey, but on that note. We met uh, uh, someone who might have another opportunity last night, even. Exciting. Yeah. Who? It, it, I don't want to give it too much away. But have you it, heard of it, Wayne Gretzky? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I threw that name out there. I'm laughing possibly. at the delivery before I even hear the name. <laughs> he, he sells wine. <laughs> that's true. That's yeah. true. He, he has a lot yeah. of other sponsorship deals. Um, you know the whistle guy, too. Yeah, Ron, Ron Foxcroft. Did he inspire a whistleblower? No. Uh -uh. <laughs> it's about Ron Foxcroft. <laughs> the guy who literally invented the whistle. Uh, there's so many inside references happening in this podcast. I hope people are still hanging all with us. All unlistenable. Yeah, all um, the Dean Brody fans are like, what the fuck is this podcast yeah. about? <laughs> who are these fucking jokers? What else is going on, though? Well, Mike w is in the Star Trek team or something now. <laughs> Dude, beat me up. Uh, that happened. That did happen. I wanted to talk about this on the podcast because uh, for our, uh, our listeners, uh, we've sort of alluded to this in the past, I talked to this section in the last podcast that um, I've been lucky enough since this pod started that there's been opportunities where, you know, some show or maybe it's comedian, something like I've done Letter Kenny where I've sat on the stage with them and sort of moderated a panel where I asked a bunch of questions. Um, the ladies from uh, the Guys We Fucked podcast, you know, that was a, a great sort of opportunity. And there's been sort of a bunch uh, as we've gone along. Lights, and JFL, JFL, all of these things that I, I've been doing. And, and I really do enjoy doing them. So, what happened was recently, uh, actually, Webmaster Dan was kind of uh, kicking the tires, and he's like, uh, you know, there might be an opportunity because there's this big thing called Fan Expo here in Toronto. It's like Comic-Con yeah, in like San Diego. like nerd stuff. Tread lightly, Max. They're, They're called losers. losers. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my people, man. So Webmaster Dan was like, you love Star Trek. I'm like, 100%. I'm like, Star Trek Next Generation is 100% my favorite TV show on television. I'm like, I'm a fan of the whole series. He's like, there's an opportunity at Fan Expo, like I said, is like this massive fan con. Everybody dresses up. It's really fun. Um, where you could moderate the panel with the cast of Star Trek Discovery because they shoot here in Toronto. I'm like, yo, I'm like, if that could happen, that would honestly be the best. But I'm not like getting my hopes up or whatever. End up getting an email from Laura, from Space Channel, people, Bell Media. Somehow this all comes together. I'm like, holy shit, this is going to happen. They like, they break it down. They're like the whole cast, 3,000 people in a, like a, a giant, like a ballroom. Yeah, yeah, convention center room. I'm like, wow. And they're like, you prep all your own questions. Like they really just kind of handed me the reins. It was like, here's the keys. See you on the weekend. You know, like it was like three weeks <laughs> out, but like see the weekend of Fan Expo. And I'm like, this is amazing. But I was like, I was stressed leading and up. You knew pr producer Max had nothing to offer. I didn't even ask because I was I like, I know you're not going to watch a bunch of the shows. I would never. You just called those people nerds, so yeah. I'm not going to bring you into the fold. Were you, do you think, like the best looking person in the room? Oh, for sure? stop it. <laughs> <laughs> just you're just slamming yeah. all of these. These are my, the Trekkers are my I know, people, I'm man. Kidding. Take all it nerds out. aren't ugly. I'm just kidding. Obviously, we're going to have to cut that out. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Now you want me to cut that out? <laughs> we'll keep it. <laughs> Did you get to meet Worf? That's, his name's Michael Dorn, the actor oh. who plays Worf, and he was not at this convention. No. Okay. But William Shatner was there. The cast of Back to the Future was there. Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd, uh, everybody. Leah Thompson. You so, saw Michael J. Fox? Yeah, I didn't see him because I wasn't... I like The cool thing is I got these like all-access badges, and this kind of like speaks to the Champagne Boys. Like I'm like, yo, I have these all-access like industry badges. We can go everywhere and see everybody. I'm hitting people up. I'm like, hey, want to come to Fan Expo? Like, just hang, walk around on Friday, and then I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing the panel on Saturday. Nobody ever's like, mm -hmm. no, I'm 
pretty busy. Like, <laughs> Dan Hamilton, who will literally go to the opening of a fucking envelope, <laughs> wouldn't come to Fan Expo with me. So anyway, uh, I know Simon, Jane, our buddy, is like a big fan of sci-fi stuff, so I bring him. But like Evangeline Lilly from Lost was mm. there signing autographs. Uh, Karen Gillan from Doctor <laughs> Who. You, everyone's, I, no, like, I don't know who those Yeah, this are. is like when I listen to you guys talk about The Bachelor. But anyway, so... <laughs> They're actually good looking, man. <laughs> 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 uh, so I was super, 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 super excited. Um, I show up. I'm, I'm like all prepped. I like literally stayed in, you know, the night before, like reading my questions, getting my shit together. And um, yeah, day of, I show up. Uh, I see Webmaster Dan, who's doing this in his sort of day job when he's not webmastering for us, and a bunch of the people that work here at Bell Media. And they're like, okay, we're gonna bring you back. Uh, the cast is is arriving one by one, and then we're gonna we're gonna have you sort of just introduce you so they feel comfortable getting on stage. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I like go into this like back green room or whatever and the whole cast is there and you can tell they're like a tight-knit group you know and then they'll all be together and then I'm just kind of sitting there going over my questions and webmaster Dan is like sitting next to me I'm like okay I'm nervous because kind of awkward you're all in the same room but they haven't introduced me yet so then finally like the people from here come over like okay uh they want to go over the questions so can I introduce you to the cast I'm like sure so walk over there and they're all sitting on this table like all around this table and I just go to the head of the table and I'm like in my brain as I'm walking like how am I going to approach this I'm like I'm just, I'm just going to take charge. Like, I just have to show them that I'm fucking confident and I know what I'm doing. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they're actors. They want to take direction. They just want to know what they're going to do and then how they can sort of execute it the best. So I'm like, hey, everybody, I'm Mike. I'm going to be up there on stage with you guys today. They're like, hi, Mike. Everyone's like in a great mood. I'm like, uh, okay. So I start and I explain the, the general questions. And Sneakle Martin Green, who's the star uh, of uh, Star Trek, um, she plays... Uh, Commander Michael Burnham um, and this, for the listeners right now these guys are laughing at me with all the names but anyway she um, as I'm asking the questions she's going okay and then the actress that plays Tilly Mary Weissman she goes just so you know she's like Sneakwa is really impressed with your questions right now like because I'm like three ah. questions in and Sneakwa like does that thing where she like points and she goes I see you there I see you there <laughs> and I'm like fucking a i'm like i'm winning them over i'm like all right this is good and i can see webmaster dan like in the corner just like mr miyagi giving me like a, <laughs> an approving look his head he's just smiling ear to ear uh, uh, he doesn't even know that but i could see him out of my peripheral and uh so anyway everybody was really cool everybody bonded and then it was time to like go through the like the bowels of the convention center and they like you do the long walk which i'm sure you've done in mm-hmm. yeah as a band that's played arenas like you know you do the walk to the stage you hear like chants <laughs> no, Star Trek. Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> so we walk to the to the stage, and we're all back there, and uh, they're like, "Okay, we're gonna play the trailer, and then you're gonna go out, and then you're gonna introduce the cast." And I'm like, "Okay, we're kind of like behind this curtain." I peeked out the curtain, and I was like, "This room is fucking packed. Like it's slammed. It's like an arena show." So like I close the curtain slowly, and then I go and I sit back down, like at backstage, just out beside the stage, and I turn to the one actor and I go, "So you're shooting in Toronto? Uh, how you like living here?" <laughs> like just like the stupidest small sure. talk but then I don't know if he was kind of nervous because it was like he immediately was like oh it's great it's great he's like oh, <laughs> that stops and it's like okay trailer's coming to an end I go out there and it's like the lights are blasting it's crazy I get up on the stage and uh, yeah we get into it I did you, did you walk up with them or no we... by myself and then you said give it up for the cast I'm Mike give it up for no, the cast no I said uh, I said hi everybody my name is Mike Veerman I host a podcast called the Mike and Much podcast uh, with my friends Max Kerman and Shane Cunningham you did not Max, I you didn't did mention you guys that. no I just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so gold I was like, thanks <laughs> <No>. Mike <laughs> <laughs> Shane's just like, no, you liar. Uh, no, but I said, uh, my name is Mike Veerman. I host a podcast called The Mike How Much Podcast. It's a real thrill for me to be here because um, I am a, I'm a huge I am one Star of Trek you. fan. That's what I was trying to say. Like, I, I honestly, sincerely go to sleep every night, watch to an episode of either Star Trek The Next Generation, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, like all those Netflix. Are those all Star Trek? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I put in like my fucking wireless earbuds and I lay down and I just fall asleep. I can, I can go out in like 20 minutes because I've watched all those series so much. I don't know if it's like the hum of the Enterprise. So I just sort of let them know, like, this is a real thrill for me. I'm like, but without further ado, I know we're all here for the cast of Star Trek Discovery. And then I brought them all out. Everybody's losing their minds. Q&A went great. Uh, and, and after I came off, like, the cast had this... Because like, you forget, like, I guess they're, you know, they're kind of new to it. It's only been on for one season. So they're still sort of getting used to the fandom of Star Trek and mm. how sort of, like feverant their fans are and, and like, then it's so, not like they're on tour doing this it's like no. this happens every so often right exactly yeah. so everyone got off everyone was like buzzing like feeling really good and it just ended up being like uh the best time ever that's so cool chloe wilde just walked yeah, by again did she? Yeah. yeah i don't want to make a thing about it again but um yeah <laughs> did and, you make eye contact with her no no mm-hmm. she had her sunglasses on this time <laughs> um, 
So and yeah, because I texted you that night. Yeah, I think you went to a TFC game that night. Yeah, and you were just like, "Oh man, that was the best!" Like I've got my dopamine hit for the for the week, and you're just like for real. on cloud nine. It was cool, man. It went really well, and I just want to thank obviously like Bill Media and Space Channel for for having me do it because. Uh, it was it was awesome, and I was actually like you know I've talked about not getting nervous anymore about doing that kind of stuff, but that was a whole other experience. They actually had uh, sign language like signers for the hearing impaired, wow. like on the side of the stage, like signing everything we That's said. You know you've made it. Well, what was crazy was uh, they she was there to my left, and I, I could feel her presence, and I know that she was signing for any hearing impaired people in the audience. And then like the third actor down, when I got to his individual question, he was like he's like, and I just want to go to my way to say like our signers are doing an amazing job. Everyone give it up for the signer. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that is such a smart, kind Class. thing to do. Yeah. It's such a classy move. I'm like, if I ever do one of these things again and there's a signer, it's like I'm either thanking them off the top or at the end. But I need to acknowledge them because they're up there. They're doing work, man. Like you should have a business card, Mr. Moderation. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> that was good. That was worth it. <laughs> I knew it was special. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's kind of the main thing that uh, I wanted to talk about. Uh, that was sort of the biggest thing that happened, uh, which was pretty exciting. So uh, I have a similar kind of story about getting to meet one of my heroes. Oh, I feel like I saw this on Arkell's Insta. Yeah, yeah, I'll be quick about it because we should get to the interview. But, um, you know, we had the show in Edmonton this past weekend. We were in Vancouver and Edmonton. In Edmonton, we were headlining this festival, Sonic Field Day. And Jimmy Eat World, one yeah. of my favorite bands, uh, was, on, was playing just before us. And I was like, oh, man, it's pretty cool. And, like, I... Jimmy World's definitely one of my favorite bands, but like our friend Julian, for instance, like loves Jimmy World. Like when he saw that like we were on the same bill as him as them, he was freaking out. And he like, should have flown out to Edmonton. I know. Yeah, he, 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 like that would be his like favorite band of all time. Yeah, like, that's like his Beatles basically. Um, and so I was trying to think. I was like, oh, it'd be cool if like we could do something with them at the show. But we, we don't know each other. We've never played together. But I know they're opening for Frank Turner in the UK in January. So I send Frank a text. I said, Frank, do you think you put me in touch with Jim? Because we're playing together in Edmonton. I kind of have a goofy idea. I want to shoot by him. He said, no problem. He puts me in a text group with Jim Atkins. So it was cool that like I'm in this text group with Frank Turner and Jim Atkins. And for certain music fans, those are two very big names. Did you add Julian? I did not. Actually, can you imagine? Well, he never lets a text conversation end without the last word. That's so true. It's a like, nightmare. Hey, Jim. Uh, Max from Markel's here. I also brought my friend Julian into the text group <laughs> just because he's a fan. Um, so um, I was like, hey, kind of a goofy idea, but uh, we've been covering Whitney Houston. I want to dance with somebody, and I wondered if you want to come up in the chorus. And then he said, oh, yeah, cool, no problem. Like, I've been covering that one anyway. And I thought he was being sarcastic because that would be, to me, a kind of an odd song for Jimmy World to cover. But he said, yeah, as long as we don't have to jet after our set, count me in. So I was like, oh, that was, like, super easy. And I texted Julian immediately, and I was, like, so fired up that this was a possibility. We, uh, a couple of days before the show, I just texted him again to firm it up. He's all good to go. Um, and it was just really cool. We got to meet him before our set. And um, it turns out that he has covered the song, like an acoustic version, like three years ago. Because I was like, were you joking when you covered it? When he said you, he's like, no, no, I actually know the song and all the lyrics. It's all good. Which was cool because sometimes when somebody asks you to participate in a cover song, having to like learn the lyrics. It's and a chore. It's, it's, it's a bit of a chore. There's some homework involved. But I will say there was a stressful moment before the set. We had all of our gear in Vancouver and it, the plan was to ship it to Edmonton uh, overnight, like in a truck. Because oftentimes we'll have like backline that we use, like a drum kit and bass amp, and we just have to bring our guitars and we're good to go. But because we have this new Arkells touring band sign that we bought for the rally, we want to get as much use of it as possible because it was very expensive. <laughs> and so we shipped it, and it was supposed to arrive in Edmonton 12 hours after it left Vancouver. So if it left Vancouver at around midnight, it should be in Edmonton the next day by noon. The afternoon we arrive, it's like 5 o'clock, still not there. 7 o'clock, still not there. 8 o'clock, still not there. And we're asking our tour manager, Dave, Dave, wh- do we know where the gear is? Like, he's like, yep, it's in the truck, it's nearby. And Dave is trying to keep his cool. Like, he's not, his job is to keep everybody from freaking out. Jimmy World is on, like, their second last song, and, the, and, the, and I see the truck arriving onto the set. So we are, like, 10 minutes away from, like, really not knowing what to do because we're headlining this festival <laughs> with literally no gear. Could you oh, borrow man. Jimmy World's gear? Yeah, we would have been we would have been able to source some gear from the other bands, mm-hmm. but it, it would have been pretty demoralizing if we like booked this big gig. It was our biggest Edmonton gig. There's like six thousand people there, and 
we, we weren't playing with our own stuff. And there's and there's a couple songs that we need the sample pad to and play And you have to. an auto-tuner on your voice. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. I don't sing live at all. <laughs> uh, and uh, But it all worked out. Uh, the gear arrived. The set went great. Jim came up for the encore, sang Whitney Houston like a bird. And actually, the next day, Jimmy World posted on their Instagram a, a cover of the Whitney Houston album saying pre-show tunes. So clearly, you know, they've been inspired. Nice. You're welcome. <laughs> so it was cool. I mean, you texting with him now? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, because we talked about he he watched the whole set side stage, uh, and then we talked after the gig, and he mentioned a, an artist that he was listening to, and I was like, oh, what's the name of that one? I texted him the next day, and actually, the following day, Frank texted in the group. So how did it go? And then I like I sent a photo, and Jim was like, it went awesome. So it was cool. That's awesome. As a, as a fanboy, it's pretty awesome to be able to be in a text group with those two guys. Do you guys want to hear a story about me meeting one of my idols? Yeah. <laughs> well, you're going to have to wait till the next pod. That's a good tease. I like it. Because I know where you're going with this. Yeah. And I, I like got it. Uh, drunk and told Mike. That's true. I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> we like to keep things fresh. But, and if you are listening, stay tuned for uh, the dessert because this is the first ever uh, call-in episode. Yeah, Q&A with the Mike on Much Podcast. Full disclosure, we actually recorded it first. So yeah, we already so know what happened. Get ready to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today on the show, uh, guys, we have Dean Brody. Like I said, very good looking guy. He's kind of like uh, young Hugh Jackman. Yeah, of course. We'll post a photo. All those country guys are good looking. Yeah. Uh, this was a good one. Actually, uh, intern Erica was there to help. She was uh, actually on the ones and twos, uh, nice. dialing in uh, the audio uh, on this one. And Dean was just a really nice guy. Like, he's just like a, like a farm boy. Like, he's yeah, just, that's like, like the sensibility of all those country guys they're yeah. just like the most like charming charismatic like laid back guys <laughs> <laughs> that's my invitation that's how, that's how you would be if you were yeah. a country artist pleasure to meet you <laughs> Right, let's, go we knock back? <laughs> let's go to the interview. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, he was a he was a great guy, and um, he is going to be on tour. Like I said, October twentieth to December second. If you want to check it out, Dirt Road Stories twenty eighteen Canadian Acoustic Tour. Uh, check that out, guys. If you are tuning in for the first time, and you are maybe a Dean Brody fan, and you've never listened to us, we have over a hundred episodes, interviews with musicians, actors, directors, an astronaut. I know I say this every week, but please check us out everywhere you get your podcast including Spotify, which is exciting for us. Also, like I said off the top, we're going to be at Just for Laughs in Montreal, September 29th. It's a Saturday, 12.45 in the afternoon. We're going to have a guest. Not in Montreal. Oh, did I say Montreal? Right. Yeah. Don't yes. go to Montreal. Yo, yeah, don't. Come to Toronto. Toronto. It's going to be here in Toronto. Guys, do you want to get Dean Brody? Let's get to it. Let's do it. Uh, you're playing at Bud Stage with Alan Doyle. Alan, like last year, he guested on the Budweiser stage with me. Yeah, just enough to come out, and this year he's he's uh, he's going to be on the stage as well. So it's going to be awesome. Alan's like show is so good. I, well, that's always interesting to me when you sort of get to collaborate with someone that you're sort of a fan of, and then they become a peer on some level. When you started collaborating with him, did you see him as sort of like, oh man, that's the dude from Great Yeah, I don't even consider myself a peer with Alan. Like, I, I feel like he's an iconic <laughs> Canadian artist, you know? And so I still get a little bit weirded out if I'm working with Alan. Like, oh, no, no shit, that's Alan Doyle. And, and, but Alan's so good. He's so gracious with his time and with his talent with me. He's been just over the top. You so know? you guys do the song, It's Friday. Yeah. Which I was rocking this morning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how does that come about? Is that a song that like you write? Is that a song that he has and then he brings you in or do you bring him in? How does that like yeah. I'm always into the, like interested in the minutia of how the work gets done. Yeah, that was like a modern way of writing. Like I wrote it and sent it to Alan and said, Hey, would you guys want to like do your thing on this? It was with Great Big C and he's like he listened to it and he's like, Yeah, man. And so they took it in the studio up there. We actually never shared a room together really? like like a studio. Uh, booth or anything so that that kind of happened how a lot of collaborations i feel like happen these days like online or just sending it back and just forth. sending it back and forth yeah and so um but we shot the video together in newfoundland which was super fun um you spent some time in nashville at, like in your early career yeah uh, i was reading and i guess the question i would have is like what lessons sort of about songwriting and the business of country music did you like did that town offer you um, Nashville, like I felt like when I moved to Nashville, I could write a song, but I learned really quickly that I didn't. I was like very heavily melodically based, which is like a pop world kind of thing. But yeah. lyrically, I was weak, and so I was like, okay, I had I had to learn really quick that this is a lyric town, and it still is. Like so much of country music is about the story, about saying something clever, 
about putting a turn on words and and so lyrically i feel like nashville is a real challenge for me and now like when i'm writing songs i'm really conscious of what's the lyric saying um i tend to pay attention a lot to melodies yeah not so much to lyrics but i think um this is generally speaking i think a lot of country folks who listen to country music listen for the lyric and so I'm, i'm always mindful of that when you go down there and like you said, you know, you're like, I, I felt like I was a very good songwriter and I went down and I, I realized I had some sort of things to learn to work out. Are you the sort of person that, I guess, do you take that hard where you're like, oh man, maybe I, it's not what I thought it was going to be. Or do you quickly sort of regroup and go, well, how can I get better? How can I learn? Yeah, I think you're kind of in a corner at that point and you're like, okay, I made the move. <laughs> I've got to <laughs> figure this out. And so I just really focused on lyrics and writing with other people and trying to learn from them and how they do it and how do they... How do they write themselves out of a corner? How do you not get in that corner to start with? And so I learned a lot and I'm still learning. Like I feel like music's always constantly evolving and morphing. And so I'm always trying to keep my pulse on on what's going on. You mentioned that, uh, you know, you were sort of more melodic, which is kind of like a, a pop music thing. Growing up, did you lean more pop or were you always sort of a country fan? I lean more rock. Like when we've had our first band, we d- had an actual garage band on the weekends. We would, we'd get together and we'd play like uh, Metallica and Guns N' Roses, <laughs> Jeff Healy band stuff, I think was as country as we got. And so um, I just found that like my voice didn't lend itself to like heavy metal or <laughs> really rocky stuff. <laughs> sure. And then the lyric with country music, I was like, oh, I, I grew up on a farm. I know what it's like to live in the country. And so it was really natural for me to make that jump. But I'd say Dwight Yoakam is the guy. Of all people, Dwight Yoakam was the one that brought me into the country genre. Because I was like, here's this guy. It's kind of on the fringes of country music. And I just thought, I've always thought that people that are kind of out there or a little outside the box are cool. And so I was like, okay, country can be cool. And just started my journey there. Wow. So so there was a conscious decision then. So, so like you said, you grew up on a farm. You related to, I guess, the the sort of overall content of country music. Yeah. But you made it like a, a cognizant decision to sort of switch over to the genre. And I think there's a lot of artists at that time that were coming out that were kind of, at the time they were cutting edge, it was changing. Country music, the landscape was really changing. It was like Tim McGraw, uh, Clay Walker, Mark Chestnut, Clint Black. There was this new infusion of country that, that I really loved. Like it wasn't just like, oh, I'm going to do this now. It's like I was starting to, like, I, I don't know, like, I don't know. I'd probably get in trouble saying this, but like the super old country, I'm not really, I don't know. It's not for me as much as it is for other people. And, you know, there's some uh, purists that probably think that's awful. But, but yeah, I just for whatever reason didn't really connect with super old country. Yeah. But uh, other than maybe some George Jones, Johnny Cash, um, but yeah, it was the, it was the new, uh, guard that came in, I guess, with, with those new guys that made me go, okay, I love this. I'm going to do this. This new wave of modern country, I yeah. guess is what brought you Which in. Which is funny. Cause now it's traditional. Like that's I traditional know. <laughs> stuff. When you just mentioned like Clint Black or Tim McGraw, it's kind of like, that's, that's the old school stuff, but it's, it's interesting how it's always changing. Of course. And the new stuff ruffles some feathers and well, the old stuff, some people, argue that it's not contemporary enough but i think in country music right now it's really exciting because you get away with really old like f- like s- styled kind of stuff like chris stapleton but then you've got stuff like sam hunt that's progressively pushing the boundaries in the pop direction of country yeah. music the guys that you're in the band with the garage band the guys that were doing metallica with you yeah did they come along with you on this country journey they didn't no <laughs> <laughs> i mean they listen to country music but uh no one's in the army and um the other one's a he, the, our drummer. He's a construction guy. He teaches construction out west, actually. So they're out of music completely. They're out of music. Yeah, they just do it for fun. Well, that's always an interesting sort of divide for me. Is like people like music is fun. That's why you start doing it, and then there's sort of a conscious decision to try and make it a career. And yeah. it's such an unconventional career, and it's hard to make a good living at it. I think, mm-hmm. especially in this country. Were you always someone that was like, I want my life to be in music. I want to make a living doing it. Or was there sort of a moment where you go, oh, this is kind of viable. Maybe I can do this. Yeah, I think I always never thought that I could be a performer. I thought maybe I could write and I loved writing, but I'm a quieter person. Like I'm not like a super extrovert. And so I moved to Nashville thinking I'd be a songwriter. And um, through encouragement from friends and just from getting confidence myself, uh, just evolved into an an artist like someone that performed on stage as well but uh 
definitely didn't think that this is what I'd be doing. You know, I, I thought I'd be working in a coal mine or um, a sawmill. That's like the place I grew up. That's what people do. So uh, it's kind of a shock, I think, even to a lot of people that grew up with me. Like, I can't believe Dean's on a stage. He's so <laughs> quiet. He sat at the back of the room. What's he doing on that stage? Um, my parents still go, you, can you write a song? Are you running into songs? And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Things are good. <laughs> like the concern, Don't worry. Like, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to support me anymore. <laughs> There's no fear. Don't worry. It's, uh, but yeah, um, even myself, like I'm surprised that this is where I ended up and that I can make a living off it. It's pretty amazing. Well, being a front person, was that a difficult transition for you? Like you said, you're quiet. So, okay, so do you start picking up tricks? Are you watching YouTube of classic front men? Or are you just like, like, how does that evolve for you? How do you become comfortable doing that? Yeah, it took a long time. And I'm still, I get scared before I go up on stage. Still? Yeah, I get super butterflies. But once you get out there and, like, my fans are singing back to me, that's yeah. helped a lot. Like, when you first start, nobody really knows what your stuff is. Or they don't know who you are. And they just kind of stare at you and go, what's this guy? We're waiting for the next guy. And so once you get enough hits under your belt, all of a sudden it's like the show. Other people are sharing in that music with you. And they're, it's like you're partying together. And that helped me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. If I was to go play for a bunch of people who didn't know who I was, it'd be, I'd be scared to death. For sure. Like getting up there and having to win them over. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I'm definitely approached from the more quiet side, the songwriting side. Mm-hmm. Well, you, speaking of the songwriting, a song like Good Goodbye, you know, it really hits on a lot of the staples of country music. Drinking, yeah. good times, camaraderie, which are things I relate to with my friends, of course. Yeah. Uh, and like, I'm curious, like, how do you know when, I guess, a lyric or theme makes the cut? Does it have to make you laugh? Like... Like, I guess this gets back to that time in Nashville where you started learning turn of phrase or why something sticks. Yeah. But how, like, like I said, how do you know when it's like, oh, that's the one? Um, I think I have to feel good. It makes me feel good. Like, whether it's the music, it's just an overall feeling. Like, you turn it up and it's like, yeah. And then you can imagine other people feeling good listening to it or feeling something. It's uh, one of my friends a long time ago, had nothing to do with music. He made an interesting observation. He said, man, Dean, I think if you can just make someone feel something, whether it's happy or sad or upset or whatever, then that's the art of music. And if you can somehow draw an emotion, happiness, you know, um, yeah, it's just, that's the key to music. And so that's what I base a lot of my decisions on. What do you think resonates more with people, lyrics or melody? As you said, like you were more of a melody yeah. guy and then now you've had to really think about what you're saying in the music. But but just as a music fan, do you think that the melody is more important or the lyrics? Man, I think it's 50-50. I feel like nowadays my fans are like, love a great, strong melody. I think a melody is more important than ever in country music right now because, I, I don't know, like I feel like our attention spans are so short and the way we receive media through our phones or TV or whatever, it's just it's just coming at you at all directions so fast, changing all the time. And so the melody's got to be super easy, not complex. I think of Tom Petty when I think of like mm. super easy melodies, but those are so hard to come by. Like the, the, the great stuff is simple. Um, yeah, it's simple, but if it was easy, everyone would do it. Exactly, yeah, which is uh, it's really weird to think. But, but yeah, I think it's like 50% melody and 50% lyric. There's still people that are just all about what is the song saying? What's it actually saying? I'm always interested when people sort of start out in their career and how they sort of envision their path. And I never know, like you meet different types of musicians. Like some musicians are stone cold careerists. They're sort of like, I want to have this and this and this, and these are my goals. And then others that are like, Hey, I just like fucking around and making music and Mm -hmm. it, what happens happens. Yeah. You know, you've been at this a long time and now you're playing some of the biggest shows I think of your career. Mm -hmm. Did you see it unfolding the way that it's unfolding? No, I think, uh, I'd never thought, that I'd be playing on the bud stage or being any kind of um, headlining act at all. Just because I'm so quiet, you know, like I'm a, I'm very much an introvert. And so it's, it's kind of weird that I go up on stage and there's other artists like in the history of country music that are that way. Like Alan Jackson is, it's kind of a contradiction. Like he's so quiet and hardly says a word, but then he's up in front of thousands of people in front of arenas full of people listening to his music and, and so something I didn't really envision, no. When you're writing, are you writing from a personal place or do you tend to tell stories of other people? I think both. Yeah, it's a hybrid of both. Like sometimes I'll write a song that's completely fictional, but um, 
I'm drawing on real life characters I've met in my life. Or, okay. You know, across Canada, in the U.S., in the South, Australia. Um, there's country fans in the U.K., you know, it's, or France even. Um, but, yeah, I don't like just talking about me. I, I'm fascinated by people and, and their story. And, and some people, I, I try and put myself in their shoes and try and tell their story sometimes. And sometimes I don't know if I'm getting it right or if I'm getting it wrong. And it's always rewarding when you realize, okay, I, I think I, I, got, I got that right. But it's also scary, like some subject matter is scary to approach because I don't want to, um, I don't want to misstep, I guess. Sure. Especially like, you know, like a song like Brothers where I'm talking about war and somebody going off to war and a family, a family's response to a loved one going off to war. Like, I've never experienced that, so I, I want to make sure that I get it right when I'm singing about it and, and hopefully I do. It's, it's one of my big fears actually is to get it wrong, so. Well, I mean, that was going to be my question is like some people use songwriting as like a catharsis. You know, it's like they want to uh, write about something that's really sort of deep inside them because it's cathartic to sort of say it out loud or put it in their art. Do you tend to approach things that way or do you like have you ever written something that's super personal to you or mm -hmm. do you tend to like pull punches and go, you know, that's actually it's, it almost hurts too much or it's too personal in order to put it into a song? Yeah, I'd say like love songs for sure. Like my recent love songs are definitely all of me mm. and but i guess there's some things i wouldn't write about that i yeah you're right some artists like they they have to spill their heart out in a musical way and i feel like for me i can do it in, in a lot of different ways so i'll avoid music for some of the more painful things and you know interesting as yeah. a listener what do you what do you enjoy do you, do you prefer that do you like i really want to know this artist and i feel like they're ripping their soul out when i'm hearing this song yeah or are you like i just want to have a good time and you it's know. kind of both right i think we all love those good time songs and every once in a while we hear a song that makes your heart just bleed yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. i love this song i hate this song but i love it you know it makes me <laughs> sad but sometimes it's good just to feel something and yeah when a music when a song does that i like them both you know but i'd say i probably lean toward more of the fun stuff escapism music. sure yeah well, that's an interesting. Thing. I mean, I guess uh, speaking of that, it's always fascinating to me because country music, I guess, politically tends to lean a little bit right. Are you somebody that yeah. is cognizant of that divide? You know, we've had lots of like Florida Georgia Line people on the show, and we've talked about the idea of politics and music, and then sort of country maybe staying out of it because like their fans tend to lean, or your fans maybe tend to lean more right. Are you aware mm -hmm. of that, or are you kind of like? Look, we're all just trying to have a good time. I don't want to get sort of too deep on that stuff. Yeah, like I really do think a lot about politics and stuff, and I have to be careful because sometimes I'll say something that could potentially get me in trouble. No, well, so um, that's interesting. So when you say in trouble, you mean like you might say fans. something that the base is your base, your fan base would be like, ah, I'm, you know, I'm not into what the way he's thinking right now. Yeah, and it's funny, like, it doesn't matter what side of the of the political spectrum. Like, I've got two examples. Like, I took a picture with Justin Trudeau last summer, and there's, like, people, some guy was burning my CDs after that. You wow. know, it's like, I respected you till now. And, and it's funny, because I didn't even say who I voted for. I just said, you know, Justin seemed like a really cool guy. He, he had us for, like, we were on the train together on the CP Rail Tour. And so, like... Justin invited me and my band to have dinner with him and his and his uh, daughter. I think it was his daughter. Like, twice. Like, that's not normal. I hung out with my band for an hour. And I just said, seems like a cool guy, and I, I got a lot of shit for that. Um, but then recently, I said something about Trump, and I got some shit for that, too. <laughs> Negative or positive? Negative, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, let's get that right. I'll stand by that all day long. Like, I'll take shit for being down on Trump any day of the week, but... Yeah, I try and just stay out of it. We all have our opinions, and yeah, music is. Let's, let's just listen to music and write about music. And but I am human. Like I have opinions. You're living like in anybody this world. else. Yeah, exactly. You know? Sometimes, like I think the thing that got me really riled up was just how the families were being split up at the border. And sure, I, yeah, I kind of lost my patience at that point, but. I think fans are also, they realize you're human. You're going to have like opinions and, and it's interesting. The world we live in is very, it's a, I'm curious as like, why does somebody think this way? And it goes back to song. Like when I'm trying to write a song about somebody, like, what are they thinking? How are they processing life? Like what, 
what kind of filter or glasses are they seeing their world through and what what shaped that what was their environment like as a kid and why did, like I, i'm fascinated by i guess psychology and even philosophy which is um pretty deep stuff for uh, you could argue i guess for country music sure maybe. Because we do sing a lot about drinking, and and I guess yeah, I, was, I think a lot of country music is escapism, as, as is a lot of different music. Like pop music is the same, I think, and and I love that part of country music is having a party and having a good time. Right, but it seems that you sort of naturally lean more empathetic. You're curious about people, yeah, and their experiences. I, I like, I find the same thing. Like both sides of the divide. I want to know why people think the way that they do. You know, because yeah. it's like they say we have more in common than we don't, you know, if we all just sat down and talk yeah. on any sort of level. Um, I guess lastly, uh, where do you see yourself over the next sort of 10, 20 years? Wh what do you want to, to, to be going on with you in your career? Man, I'd love to keep performing for my fans. Like I, there may come a day where what I say or what I, how I say it through music isn't resonating with them or relating with them. But until it does, I'm going to keep going and keep trying to write music for us and, make those moments where we can share in, in life and and the joy of music it's such an amazing thing if i can call it that music is this thing this uh that we all so we love it in some form or fashion all of us on the on the earth so it's very i think unifying and something that's a common thread for us all is this experience called music and as long as i can keep doing it and sharing it with my fans and making a living at it um i'll be a happy man Thank you so much for your time. Man. Yeah, man. Welcome to the dessert. This is a dessert unlike any other, from what I understand. <laughs> Shane, I believe this is, what, our first ever call-in show? Maybe you should just let the listeners know what we're doing. We're doing a call-in show, Mike. <laughs> it's our first ever. <laughs> Did you know what the questions are beforehand? No. Okay, so none of us know what these questions are. No, and one girl, it's like this is like part of her birthday party bachelorette thing or something. Whoa. But I'm just going to call <laughs> the first one. We've got quite a few. Let's see how many we can get through. Also, for our oh, listeners, I had no idea this was happening until it emerged on my Instagram story uh, <laughs> this morning. <laughs> it's okay, cool. That's what we're doing. Okay, this guy's name is Ryan. Ryan is and our And if first they don't caller. answer, just fuck them. <laughs> I like that we're calling them. It's not really a call-in show. It's uh, the Call podcast us. calls you. Okay. Hello? Hello, Ryan. This is Shane from Mike on Much. What is your question? Uh, my question actually was uh, kind of for all of you. I know the thing was kind of geared to Max, uh, <laughs> but I really enjoy a lot of the uh, pop culture interviews on the pod. But one of my favorite interviews was with uh, Kyle Dubas, because I'm a huge hockey fan. So I was just wondering if there's anything in the works for other sport personalities interviews in the future. Oh, Ryan. Uh, how's it? This is Mike, by the way. How's it going? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Thanks for having me on, by the way. Thanks for uh, calling in. But to answer your question about Kyle Dubas, one, Kyle's awesome, and now he's like a really big deal. Yeah. We got him before he was famous. That's right. Yeah. Now, do you think we can get him again, Max? He's your boy. You know, I do text Kyle Dubas, actually, pretty regularly, and um, he's always sharing a good management parables with me. Like, he's, he sends me screenshots of books that he's reading and, like, things that he underlines. The guy reads a lot. Uh, but maybe we can get him back on now, now that he's a big wig. Yeah. As for other sort of uh, people of that ilk, we are actually currently trying to get a really big fish that we probably can't talk about right now. Yeah. But if it were up to us, this whole show would probably be a sports show. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think it's a good question. We, yes, we would like to do more stuff uh, in the sports world. And as for whoever, like who we're trying to get, just imagine what maybe if you're a longtime listener, my favorite team is, and maybe who would uh, be calling the shots on that team. Yes. Right on. All right. Are you happy with Sweet. that? Yeah, no, that's awesome. And again, thanks for taking my call and love the pot. Oh, thanks for calling, Ryan. Thanks, man. Cheers. You know what, um, you, Chen, you can keep calling. You know what, um, Kornheiser, my, one of my idols, he does, because on his radio show back in like the 90s that he had it, when people would call in, he, he has no time for pleasantries. So if anybody asks him how he's doing, he just hangs up the phone on them. That's hilarious. <laughs> Howard Stern was like that, too. It's so Canadian, though. It would be yeah, so I know. Canadian for us I to know, do that. I know, I know. But I think for time's sake, we might have just have to get to it. How many do these to have? Quite a few. <laughs> There's like a, a list of numbers <laughs> taking up the whole page. Hello? Hi, Curtis. This is Shane from Mike on Much. What is your oh. question? Hey, how's it going? Good. Oh, hi. Um, my question is uh, for Max, actually, because I know... I, you probably got a lot from Max already, but uh, yeah, like I know you guys. Uh, Arkell said that they 
maybe going to do some university shows. And uh-huh. no, our, our uh, frosh, our frosh performer at Barack this year didn't cut it. Guy Nav, he lip synced the whole concert. is awful. I'm wondering <laughs> if there's any opportunity for them to come down here and uh, St. Catherine's play a show. Okay, no, we're, we're, work, we're working on it. Thank you, buddy. Uh, right. We're, right. we're going to try to get get to your school. We were actually I just mentioned Brock today. We had a good time at Isaac's a few years ago. And oh, yeah. uh, we promise right, we won't lip sync any of the show if we, if we come. Oh, that's perfect. That's, yeah. Then you'll automatically better than now was, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, see you. Thanks a lot, buddy. All right. All right, thanks, yeah. Are you satisfied with that, or you think he's bullshitting no. you? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I have follow-up questions. Okay, this one is Meg Murphy, and this is, like, tied into her birthday and her bachelorette or something. That's right. exciting. I know she's a huge fan. This is Nova Scotia. Oh, long-distance call. Hello? Hi. Is this Meg Murphy? Yes, it's me. Hello, Shane. Hi, <laughs> and I'm here with Max and Mike also. Oh my gosh, this is surreal, guys. I'm I'm truly honored. I heard your birthday's coming up. It is. The big day's tomorrow. Oh, hey, wow. happy, birthday. happy birthday, Meg Murphy. Thank you. Thank how, you. How old? Uh, I'll be 28. Oh, nice. Just a kid. <laughs> Just a kid, yeah. What is your question? We play this game. I'm from Halifax, and I'm, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it. It's called Sociables. No, no. It's like, like a, it's a drinking game. I wondered if we could go around the circle, and each of you could give the others a compliment. Wow. So I was wondering if we could start with Mike. Uh, am I supposed to give all three of you a compliment, or are they complimenting me? Uh, you're you're gonna start by complimenting Shane and Max, and then they'll do the same to you. Oh, okay. Well, do do we add you into this? Oh, I you should. would love. All right, yeah, I'll add yeah. you in as well. Okay. Okay. Love it. Um, Shane, you are very hardworking and innovative, and you're always trying to come up with new ways to make the pod interesting, such as a call-in show, randomly, uh, mm. for the dessert. Blushing. <laughs> Max, uh, you are also uh, very hardworking and generous. <laughs> Same as Shane. <laughs> well, you know, you both work hard. Uh, you, you're, you're generous. With, you, in being in the Arkells, you get a lot of fun opportunities, sure. like uh, open bar shows, yeah. lots of perks. You are always very generous about inviting all of your friends, if uh, you can, to get into those things. And most people don't have to do that. You yeah. know? So you do do that, and that's very kind. That shows true friendship. Yeah. And Meg Murphy, even though I've never met you, I'm going to compliment you for taking a chance and calling in and listening. And when I used to tour in a band, Halifax was like one of my favorite places uh, in all of Canada to be at. So I'm going to compliment you and Halifax. Love it. Oh, that was perfect. That's exactly what I was hoping for. It felt good, too. I see why people do this. It felt good to say something yeah. positive about you guys. Yeah, because sometimes when people is, are drinking, they get meaner and angrier and more frustrated with life. But I, but I find... For the most part, our friends are pretty good about being joyful. We do compliment each other a lot already. Yeah. So I don't know if we need the cards to do it, but it does feel good to do it not drunk. Yeah, that's true. Now who are we complimenting? Or is is the game done or do I have to compliment everyone now? No, we go around the circle. So I was maybe, (laughs) maybe Max, you could go next. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, So I'll start with Mike. Mm. Uh, Mike, I uh, wish I had uh, your lexicon. You You come up with words all the time that I could never think of. And it blows my mind especially because you barely graduated high school. Uh, So that really impresses me. And Shane, you uh, are so creative and funny and quick-witted and you've you've done so so much, you know. You've you've done so many different kinds of films and comedy bits, and that also impresses me because you barely graduated high school. <laughs> correction. <laughs> yeah, correction. He, he did, did graduate, graduate high school. school. <laughs> I was busy coming up with bits, <laughs> witty stuff. And now Meg. And and Meg, um, I compliment you on your uh, classic East Coast name, Meg Murphy. Ah. That's what I like about going to the East Coast is that everybody has very East Coast sounding names, no matter where you go. Phil Maloney, Tim Baker. Or Alec O'Hanley. Like, these are just great <laughs> East Coast names. Awesome. Well, thank you. Well, Meg, the phone's in front of me, so I'm going to start with you. I okay. just want to say, uh, anytime I think people will compliment Canadians and they say how nice we are, I always think they're talking about the Halifax region because everyone in that area is the nicest people I've ever met. For example, you coming up with this game where we all compliment each other. <laughs> exemplifies that like in Hamilton and Toronto 
the game would be how do we roast each other or have a rat battle and just ruin each other. <laughs> As for Max, I would say I'm very jealous of your charisma and singing voice. Yeah. <laughs> and this seems like a cop out, but it's honestly true. I'm really jealous of uh, Mike's charisma and singing voice. <laughs> I am. I actually am. You actually really yeah. surprised me, Shane, though, when you when you did the singing challenge the, for Lupus. That how good your voice is. Oh, yeah. wow, N Max, this isn't a lying circle. <laughs> <laughs> no one said that. Legit. <laughs> no, I, I kind of thought it was good. And is that, now is the game done? No, you got. Oh, you did my card. Yeah, did it, Mike? Uh, we got a lot of callers to get to, though. Yeah, what's going on here, Max. Mike? This is taking a while. I'm sorry, guys. No, we're we're all good. We're all done. Well, thanks for calling in. That was awesome. That was really nice. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye, bye Mike. Happy birthday. Hello. Hi, Brooklyn. This is the Mike on Much podcast calling. What is your question? My question? Uh, it was for you guys, actually. Oh. Uh, this is probably one of Sorry. This is probably one that you've already that you've gotten before. But I was wondering if you guys would have any advice or tips for... A shy, or ner a shy and nervous person who wants to pursue a career in the interviewing and journalism industry. Mm, wow. You guys have been doing it for a long time, obviously. Max, myself, and Shane are all sitting in a semicircle, and I guess we'll all just hit you with like a little piece of advice. Yeah. So the, the advice that I would give you if you're shy uh, about sort of jumping into a career where you have to really interact with people and sort of do more journalistic mm -hmm. work is just do it. Like literally, this is going to sound so silly, but like start by interviewing like your family members, someone you feel comfortable with, and then interview, like, basically the key to any of these stuff is just doing it a bunch of times until you start to feel comfortable. And maybe do it with your friends at first. And it might seem totally dumb to, like, ask one of your friends 20 questions, but just do it and tape it and then listen back to yourself and then be like, oh, that was uncomfortable. I can do this better. And, uh, yeah, just keep doing it until yeah, you feel comfortable. Yeah, repetition. That's good. Reps. One. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say also... Um, you got to be resilient in in that most of uh, the entertainment business, whether you're a musician or working in film or television, is you get told no all the time. No, that's a bad idea. No, you can't interview that person. No, sir, we don't have room for you. No, 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 no. So you just have to get really good at remembering that everybody's told no all the time and to not get discouraged and just to like just hold on to the little wins and build momentum from there because. Uh, because if you get dis if you get discouraged uh, easily, it'll be hard to keep going. So just just remember that you know you got you got to keep pushing. Hey Brooklyn, where, are you calling from uh, Saskatchewan? I am. Yeah. I recognize your area code. Okay. Well, that's impressive. Yeah. Wow. Th thanks so much for <laughs> yeah. calling in. We'll talk yeah, to you soon. Good luck. Thanks for talking to me. Bye. Thank Brooklyn. you. Bye. Thanks. And we got Abby coming up, boys. Nine oh two. Is that is that another uh, Halifax number? Is this like a hidden talent, Max? <laughs> he knows all the area codes. Oh, no, I, I recognize him. Hello? Hello, Abby. This is the Mike on Much podcast calling. What is your... Oh, wow, that was a quick hang-up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe lead with uh, something like, this is Howard Stern's show. <laughs> okay, that was weird. I think no, that was just she, a phone she, she, mistake. I think she just dropped the call. Yeah. I don't, I don't, you do? Oh, Shane, well. see, this is the difference between you and I. You think that you got hung up on. She clearly didn't hang up on you. I just think, obviously, the call just <laughs> dropped. <laughs> Happens all the time. I thought You're I mean, like, fuck that. They hung up on you. Can what? you believe that, Abby? Hello? Hello, Reggie. This is the Mike on Much podcast. What is your question? Oh, I... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what? I really like you guys because you kind of show a different side of um, the what I think of as the media world. Um, and Mike always asks very inquisitive questions. And I, I guess I my motive, my question would be what's kind of like the motivation behind uh, such thought provoking questions and things like that. That's a good question. So uh, I would say this. So so Max preps a lot of the questions. Like both of us basically go over questions and do different prep stuff. And from the start, because Max has been on the other side, he's been an interviewee so much with Arkells that basically we sort of like broke down the stuff that we would want to hear if we were, you know, if I'm watching an interview with Paul McCartney or Noel Gallagher, that I'd watch and I'd go, man, why don't you go there? Why don't you ask that? Like 
go a bit off the beaten path and don't ask the exact same things that literally everybody else is going to ask in media, like you said. We try to sort of do something a little bit different, zig when everyone else zags. Um, and I think that, like, yeah, the impetus of that was Max sort of getting, I don't, I don't know, bored, but just thinking there might be a better way to ask the people that are being interviewed questions. And that's kind of, I think, where we're coming from. Would you say that's true, Max? Yeah, totally. And I think, you know, because we love the medium uh, that is podcasts, uh, podcasting, <laughs> Um, we listen to some great interviewers and we go, oh, it wouldn't be fun to have that job. You know, it's like anybody from uh, Terry Gross of Fresh Air or Bill Simmons or Zach Lowe if you're a basketball fan. There's some really smart interviewers out there. And uh, like any other kind of passion, you, you have your heroes and you, then you want to do it yourself. No, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Because I listen to Zach Lowe a little bit and Simmons and they both kind of like you know, preamble a little bit, kind of like Mike does, and then they'll be like, oh, and here's this really thought-provoking question. And it, it's really interesting to see how you can, you guys can apply it to, you know, your world while they do basketball and sports in general, so. Awesome. Well, thank you, man. Well, thanks for listening. Really yeah. appreciate it. And Max, love the Arkells. You guys are great. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and uh, Shane's here too, Reggie. <laughs> uh, uh, digital what? What is it? <laughs> I'm just saying Shaney boy's here. I'm leaving uh, him hanging. Shane. I love the digital appetizers. They're great. All right. <laughs> All right, Reg. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Bye. Right. That one's a comedian over here. Okay. <laughs> that was good. We got a 713 area code here. What's that? Max, can Ooh, you call it? 713? I don't even Is think that it's American? Canadian. I think it's American. Wow. Wow, that'd be nuts. <laughs> American fans. Of course we have American fans. Of course we do, yeah. Hi, you've reached Nathan. Oh. I can't come to the phone right now. I'm bad at so time. Please leave your name and number. Well, um, fuck him. Okay. Nathan Agud is. Evening, this is Zach. Hey, Zach. This is the Mike on Much podcast. What is your question? What's my question? My question is: Over the last three years doing the pod, how has your guys' lives and careers changed? Good question. That is a good question. All right, Thank Zach. You. Are you talking about like in relation to like how's the pod changed our lives, or how has, or how's our life just changed in three years? Over, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. E I guess it's the either second. way, but uh, you know, love the pod, so definitely feel free to use the first one. Sure. Uh, okay, I'll take it first. Zach, what's up? This is Mike. Um, hey, Mike. Hey, I would say that what's changed is we started it out like sort of like on a lark, so that the three of us could hang out and mess around. And then after a certain point and a certain amount of interviews, people started asking me to like moderate and do like live interviews or like panels with like whether it's musicians or actors. And so that is something that I never even thought about doing when we started doing this. And then it just sort of became like an opportunity that was created that I didn't even really know existed or was an opportunity. And now I really love doing those things. So that's something I never foresaw when we started. And shit, like now I do that quite often. I'm, I'm the new face of moderation. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what people say. Uh, you know, I, don't, I didn't really have a particular game plan when we, when we started the, the pod, but I just assumed uh, if you're working with really smart, hardworking, talented people that good stuff will come from it. And as Mike said, you know, over the course of over 100 episodes, we've got to meet so many interesting people. And, you know, we hosted a live show and we, you know, have got to hang out at Coachella together. And it's just been a really fun way to, like, document our lives. And I don't keep a journal, but, so, but I am looking forward to one day listening back to all these episodes and going, oh, yeah, we did this thing, we did that <laughs> thing. And, um, yeah, and I, actually, and, and it's been become a part of who I am and a lot of times when I'm doing our Kells press they ask about the podcast like it comes up in basically every interview like this this weekend in Vancouver and Edmonton people are asking about the podcast so, wow yep yeah. and for me I'm not sure if you listened to the podcast from the beginning but uh, you may remember if you have I was uh, single <laughs> and I uh So I, so I was kind of to cut that out. I was kind of broke <laughs> and I didn't have a lot going on creatively at the time like as a side project and then the pod came and it kind of breathed new life into me and then before I knew all my bad stories became positives because all the bad stuff that was happening to me actually had a silver lining because I could retell that story and make kind of uh, uh, it was actually a positive for the podcast anytime something a little strange would happen to me and then before I knew it I met my wife and before I knew it I had a 
baby and then I got a home and I got back on track in every way. So yeah, the pod, I'm not sure if it changed my life, but definitely the last three years my life has changed. That's awesome. Nice. I think Shane's almost tearing up now. This is no. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I'm not. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm thanks. just looking at the phone numbers who are calling us. All right. Thanks for calling, buddy. Thank you. Bye. All right. I kind of like this Q&A thing. I wasn't sure where it would go. Yeah. It's not as funny as I thought it could no, be. No, they don't all have to be funny. No, no, but I do think um, people do like a good Q&A, generally speaking. Call-in shows are fun, man. Call-in shows are fun. Okay. We could, next week. We, we need to have a subject next time. Will we could Kawhi do stay in Toronto? Call in. Let us hear your thoughts, I was going to go with just advice. I like that. Because we all have different types. I think we're all good at giving advice. Sure. But in different ways, you know? Mm-hmm. So it'd be mm-hmm. interesting for the three of us to put our heads together if people have any... Uh... I'm good at giving advice. Like, Hello. Hello, this is Mike on Much. What is your question? <laughs> uh, uh, my question is, you guys are all Raptors fans. Correct. Yeah. Big time. When is it okay for me or us as Raptors fans to actually be 100% excited about Kawhi Leonard being on this team. Ooh. When he when he has his first No thir- trepidation. When he, when he has his first like 30 point 11 rebound, you know, seven assist game and it's got to be within the first like a uh, few few games. But won't that still feel like it, it, because of the whole one season thing, since this is kind of like a finals or bust season, won't you still in the back of your mind be like, this is great and all, but he's still leaving? No, if no. he's playing well and we get to the finals, he can leave after one year. That's yeah. I feel, if we I, get to the finals. Let's well, say we get out in the first round. Like, you know what I mean? It still feels like the whole season is going to be like, will we, never, will, will we ever feel 100% comfortable? Yeah. So uh, my, my answer to that would be uh, if he's healthy – and playing to his level, then I'm super. I'm happy. I'm happy about Kawhi being a Raptor. Mm-hmm. The only thing that makes it a disaster is he gets if he gets injured. So it's like I'm I'm down for the Kawhi ride, uh, stay or leave, a, as long as he plays to his potential. All right, oh. all right, all right. I'm just gonna say alley oop to that, and thank you, John. <laughs> okay. I think this is a state's call too. Five eight six. Alicia. Yeah. White oh. sparrows or. Yeah. Michigan. Hello. Hello, Michigan. This is Mike on Much calling. What is your question? Uh, my question is for Shane and Mike. Yes. yes. Okay. Um. So, Shane, you're a new father. Yes. Mike is a father to be. I was wondering, uh, how has childhood slash child coming into your life, a child coming into your life slash an impending child coming into your life in the case of Mike, how has that affected your values? I thought you were going to say affected your partying, but uh, <laughs> those for me it's values. actually made me party more. That's the, a weird twist. But. I mean, that, that partying's no, a value. That no, no, no value, value. So I, I cut off the question. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I guess what, what's changed is I feel like once uh, our child is here, my life is going to shift and I don't know how much it's going to shift, but I know now I live a somewhat sort of like, I'm not going to say selfish life, but like if I want to do something, like luckily my wife and I, like we're very good about like, oh, she wants to do her thing. I do my thing. I can just sort of do what I want and go where I want and and sort of when I want. I feel like when the kids here like randomly going to a Raptors game on a Tuesday and drinking like three giant beers I think is out the door just because there's going to be a new level of responsibility not because I have to but because I want to be uh, the sort of father that is just around and present so I guess that's how it's changed my thinking I feel like there's a reckoning coming for the way I've been living for most of my adult life and for for me I think I value being cool less there's something about being a dad where you kind of throw all that out the window and I like I thought for some reason before I had a kid, I wouldn't lower myself to making baby voices or doing any of that. <laughs> for, like I was at a barbecue recently and I was really talking baby talk and people were like, what the fuck? This is the least cool thing I've ever seen. But <laughs> I wasn't embarrassed. Cool. All right. Well, thank yeah, you for calling in, Alicia. Uh, Alex's Instagram, you're really into uh, carrying the baby. Oh, yeah. The, the strap-in oh, thing. That's just for Not likes. Strap-on. Let's be honest. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, that was just a good photo. I'm like, make a story of this. <laughs> but thank you for following that account. Oh, of course. <laughs> Plug the account while we're here. Yeah, what's the account, Alicia? At This Family Tree. Yeah, there you go. 
All right. Thank uh, you. Thank you. We missed a call from Houston, Texas. Do we call Texas. back the Let's person call back. from Houston? Yeah, yeah I like a While accent. we were talking to Alicia, if you couldn't tell, uh, we, we had a call coming in. And I'm guessing it was from Texas based on the, the area code. Okay. Also, if you missed it, at this family tree is the world's it, uh, foremost um, maternity blog. There's only like three more. We don't have to. Hello. Houston, we had a problem. <laughs> Sorry, uh, this is Mike on much. Hey, how's it going, man? Are you from Houston? I'm from. Actually, I'm originally from Toronto. I moved to Houston a while back, but uh, yeah, I'm. Uh from uh, Toronto, but living in Houston. Oh, nice. Nice. We're trying to guess from the area yeah. codes. Yeah. What is your question? Okay, so um, thank you guys so much for calling me back. I'm a huge fan of you guys. I've listening to y'all for so long. You guys have a badass podcast. Love you guys. Uh, uh, thanks, man. So, thank y'all, absolutely. So my question is, um, I'm a big podcast fan, listen to a bunch. Um, what are each of your top two podcasts to listen to, your top two go-to podcasts? And also, was the Mike on Much podcast, was it modeled after a specific podcast that you guys have heard in the past? Since it has a really good mix of the interview, it's got some good banter, and it's got a lot of, uh, it's got a good variety of stuff, and also some humor. So I'm wondering, was it modeled after a podcast that you guys have listened to in the past as well? Sure, sure. Yeah, I'll start. Um, Okay, to answer the first question... I mean, I listen to so many, and there's so many different good podcasts out there. But I'd say if I had to choose, my top two would be uh, the Slate Political Gab Fest, which is a weekly show on about U.S. politics. So if you're interested in that, it, that'd be the one I recommend. And uh, I also love Bill Simmons. Um, I know he speaks to my sensibilities in a lot of ways, and I, I typically love his guests and how much he talks about basketball. Um, but what, probably my third favorite podcast is uh, The Gist from Mike Pesca, uh, which is also a Slate magazine podcast. And... The format of that show, uh, we ripped off directly uh, to model after our show. So uh, th- it's usually it, his show. The, the gist is a daily show. It's as an. You, op- know, you said this the other day, and I don't remember that at all because we didn't even have a dessert. Yeah, originally. who does the dessert on this pod? N- no, uh, sir. All I mean is that there, there's an interview in the middle, and there's an open and a close. Right, right. So I mean, like it, it is different. I'm not saying mm-hmm. it, but like the, what gave me the form. Right. Yeah. Was, it was, was the that. impetus. Yeah. yeah, the impetus. Yeah. But go ahead, Shane, Mike. What do you guys oh, uh, f- for me, I'm going to say not necessarily because I'm crazy about the interviewer, but WTF is definitely a podcast I go to for the guests. <laughs> and w- another one I'm really into uh, the interviewer and the guests is the Armchair Expert with Dak Shepard. I really think it's one of the b- best podcasts out there right now. And uh, over to you, Mikey. Uh, I, I love the low post. Like, there's certain mm-hmm. podcasts that pop up, and so, like, I'm a huge NBA basketball fan, and I really like Zach Lowe, who's a former guest on this pod. And so, anytime he pops up, I, I just like, I, I like listening to him talk about basketball with whoever his guest is. I get very excited about that. And then I find, like, I kind of jump, I'm kind of guest dependent. So, like, I used to listen to a lot of Mark Marin, but now it's like, unless he has, like, a crazy good guest that I'm super interested in. I won't just listen to sort of any Marin. I find myself listening to The Daily uh, by The New York Times oh, every day. Because yeah, yeah. it's a really sort of consumable, it's like 25 minutes and they basically catch you up on sort of world news from the, the New York Times perspective, of course. But th- those those are kind of the two that, that I, I tend to listen to on the regular. And then, of course, Simmons and, you know, Woj. I'm like, honestly, my consumption is mostly NBA basketball when I'm listening to, to pods. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for calling in. Hey, uh, thank you guys so much. You guys do great work. Really appreciate the call, guys. Oh, thank uh-huh. you. Thanks for listening, man. We really appreciate it. This is so cool, actually, because okay. we calls. put them out there, and I, I, on a certain level, I kind of assume it's only our friends listening. <laughs> so to know that there's a dude in Houston tuning in. Yeah, man. That's so cool. I don't know. The gist leans pretty left, and so does the New York Times daily. Yeah. He's down in Texas. He's from Toronto. He's originally. from Toronto. Though. Even though okay. he did say y'all. <laughs> <laughs> he picked up the accent pretty quick down there. Hello. Hello, this is the Mike on Much podcast. What is your question? Hi, uh, how's it going? I was just wondering, uh, question for Max. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> as a songwriter myself, I'm just wondering, what's your songwriting process? Ooh, uh, good question. Um, I'm always taking notes on my phone. So I just have a note on my phone where basically anytime there's a subject matter or a theme that pops in my head that I think could be interesting to write about, I write it down. And I'm also, I hang out with people that are much smarter than me, so oftentimes, like, you know, somebody in my group of friends will say something that's clever or, or interesting or, or frame something in a way that I haven't thought of, and then I just steal that idea directly from them. <laughs> uh, and so, um, 
so I always have that that note on me, and I'm always thinking about it. And then when it comes to actually sitting down at, with an instrument, piano is my songwriting vehicle of choice. I, I feel like it speaks to me a little bit more. And oftentimes I'll sit at a piano and uh, start chording and singing along, and then if something strikes me, then I'll kind of go to my, my notepad and see if there's any lyrics that kind of match up with it. So that, that's typically the way I work. And I, and I tr lately I haven't done much songwriting because we've been so busy with the album promo, but uh, <coughs> otherwise I, I try to be kind of on thinking about songwriting all the time otherwise. So I don't necessarily like set aside a couple weeks to write a bunch of songs. I, it could happen anywhere. It could be in a plane, it could be on tour, it could be at home. It could be at three in the morning when I get home from the bar. Like it could be any any time. So I, I try not to be too precious about it. Fair enough. Can I can I ask one more follow up? Yes, go. L lyrics or chords first? Mm, again, not too precious. I think as soon as you start getting superstitious about it, then you can psych yourself out. So I don't even know. Uh, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I mean, and sometimes it's like you know you'll have a you know, musical idea kicking around for a bit with no lyrics and sometimes you have a lyrical idea kicking around with no music and I don't know, you just hope hope there's a, you know, a happy marriage at some point. Okay, beauty, thanks for answering my questions. Good, good luck, right. thank you. you. Have a good one. Guy was a bit of a bore. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get a Just Shane question here. I got a good feeling about this. <laughs> my good feeling is that it's gonna be right for Max. <laughs> Okay, this is the last one. How about yeah, that? it is. It is. Like, wow. Literally, it, we're wrapping good. it up. Okay, the last, the last call of the day. I'm excited about this, guys. This has been good. I'm, I'm, I am enjoying this. Hello. Hello. This is the Mike on Much podcast. What is your question? Hi. Uh, I have a question for Max. Is ah. that all right? You, you, so, what, hi. This is this is this, sorry. This is Mike here. What's your name? My name's Anna. Anna, how's it going? Thank you for calling in. First of all. Secondly, of you, course. You got to ask Shane a question. No one's asked him a question. Yeah, right you're sorry. not asking Max nothing until yeah, you ask Shane first. You ask Shane a question first. Okay. Okay. Shane. Yes. Your story of being in PEI, it was from like forever ago. Okay, so she's not there just like Kelsey. She knows you. She knows me. But what was like your favorite part? Like, have you visited anywhere else on the East Coast or is it just PEI? Yeah, I. I'm really bad at uh, any geographical. <laughs> I'm bad at saying words. And you were in Lunenburg. Yeah, I've been I've been all around that area, but to me, it's all the same in the sense that it's all very uh, beautiful. I really Aww, like it over that's there. So nice. But yeah, I always mix up like PEI. What's the other one? Uh, Nova, Nova Scotia, Scotia, Nova Scotia, and Newfoundland. Close. I always think it's the exact same place. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I'm always like, I love fair. Newfoundland, and my wife's like, you've never been there. <laughs> and it's Brant's Newfoundland. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't know. You're, you're saying it like the original, like Newfoundland? Like yes. You know, you're one of the explorers? Yeah. yeah. We talk That's about the so funny. Point. I love it. Uh, Anna, thank you for asking that question. You can now ask Max the question you wanted to ask. Actually, we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Let her ask the question. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Now I'm taking forever. Um... So I am working in the music industry in Halifax. I'm like a budding industry professional. I'm using air quotes you can't see right now, but uh, I'm wondering if you, like as a musician, have any advice or anything that like you wish that like emerging music industry workers knew or like were more aware of? Oh, sure. Um, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, number one, nothing in the music business, and, I, and I'm quoting our booking agent who's been doing it for 30 years and is an incredibly successful guy. None of it is rocket science. Uh, it's all about being really energetic and collaborative and being a good hang and being helpful yeah. um, and being, you know, it's, it's like so much of the business is just being around other people and being able to lend a hand. So if you prove yourself to be sort of like a thoughtful person who goes above and beyond, and that could be said for any job, but I'd say that's a good starting point. Um, okay, cool. And also the other thing is, um, you know, there's a, it's a big old world out there. So I, I feel like oftentimes people that are from small towns can often get wrapped up in whatever like little local politics that are happening out there and just and I and I think about this myself it's like no one just just remember no one gives a fuck just like who think about who who are the best and brightest and model yourselves after them because if you're yeah. only sort of like competing or thinking about like the person next door then I don't think your mind will be quite open to the world of possibilities that are out there so yeah. and it sounds cheesy but just like you know 
there's a big world out there, and and, and take notes from from the very best, and that'll yeah. you know, that'll serve you. My dad always tells me that if I'm the smartest person in the room, I'm in the wrong room. So yeah, that's there you very go. similar to what you just said. I, I like that expression. So, well, good luck. Yeah, it's a good one. Wow, thank you so much. All right, see ya. Awesome. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Bye. We should do that uh, like semi regularly, because right. yeah, I think uh, when people hear that, they're gonna go, "Oh, why didn't I call in? I would. I had some questions." Mm-hmm. Into it. How do you want to wrap it, Shane? It's your dessert. Hey, these don't need to be funny. Yeah, man. that's what we've proven today. <laughs> 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 all right, that was good. That's it. That's all. That's our episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to Dean Brody for being on the show. Again, you can get tickets for Just for Laughs. Check it out online. There's lots of details on it, like we said in the open. Yeah. Uh, the Mike on Much podcast can be found on Instagram and Twitter at Mike on Much. Uh, subscribe to the show uh, on iTunes. You can also find it wherever pod- podcasts are found. Uh, Spotify has it now, too. So if you are a Spotify listener, just uh, save it to Spotify. Uh, and it's a great way to share the show. You can put it in your Instagram stories. So if you like the show, the best thing you can do is tell your friends about it and subscribe. Huge thank you to uh, the whole gang here at Bell Media. What else do we got? Oh, yeah, Tara Pickhead, Janet Gregory for putting together the artwork. The Mike and Much Podcast is produced by Max Kerman. See you next week if we don't die on the weekend.